I'll make a tiny arm appear. Okay. So this is both the most ludicrous and the most ingenious device I think I've been sent to date. Uh, it's by a company called SwitchBots, and basically, its silly little arm comes out and presses buttons for you, so you don't have to. Um, it works with She That Should Not Be Named, and Google Home, and If This Then That, and Siri Shortcuts. Um, and you could use it for things like, I don't know, garage door openers, it could press that button for you. Or you could put it on your washing machine and it could turn your washing machine on. Uh, you could use it for like a towel radiator if you've got one of those with a switch outside your bathroom. Anything you can possibly think of, you could use this to do that. So the setup of this thing is probably the easiest I have ever seen. I opened up the application and it was already in there. This thing was already in the app. Um, witchcraft, I thought. It wasn't witchcraft, it was Bluetooth. Uh, but either way, whatever it was that did it, this thing was already set up. I didn't have to do anything. I took the little tab out of the battery, opened up the app, and because Bluetooth was already switched on on my phone, it automatically added it to the app. Doesn't get any easier than that. Physical installation of this thing is as simple as taking the 3M tape off the back and then sticking it to the thing that you plan to control. As long as you put it close enough so that the little arm can reach the button, uh, it will do its thing when you press the button in the app. Of course, you'll die laughing because watching it in action is utterly preposterous. So this thing is actually a standalone device. You could use this to control your towel radiator at 7am every morning or just on Tuesdays, whatever's your poison. Uh, and without any kind of internet connection or your mobile phone, it will operate because the timer is actually programmed directly into this thing. It is fully standalone. Uh, if, of course, you want to control it with, say, Google Home, uh, or if this, then that, or she that should not be named, you'll need their hub, which is a flashing cloud for some reason. Uh, so if you imagine this is kind of like your little Terminator, uh, Terminators need Skynet, and Skynet for some reason is a flashing rainbow cloud. Setting up your flashing rainbow cloud in the application is very easy. Uh, all you gotta do is go into the app, make sure you're connected to your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, and then scan for it. Uh, the cloud will appear in the app, and then you can tell all these things, I want you to be accessible to the outside world. And they will go, okay, I will be. Uh, it's that simple. So then, she that should not be named, Google Home, and if this, then that, communicate via your flashing rainbow cloud to control your switch bots, and everything is great. Um, this is where it gets a bit weird. For some reason, SwitchBot thought it would be a good idea if this thing could control your TV. You're right, Britney Spears, that is unexpected. So the idea of this thing is it can blast infrared signals, which is pretty cool. Uh, it works in just the same way as a Broadlink RM Pro or Broadlink Black Bean does. Uh, it learns infrared signals from your existing infrared remote. So if you have a TV uh, or a set-top box or an AV receiver that uses an infrared remote, you can teach it to this thing, which is great if it worked properly. Um, it, turning things on and off is brilliant for that. It's great. If that's all you want to do, this thing is perfect. Uh, I tried to teach it navigation, like up, down, left, right, select, go back, menu, um, and I tested it out and it was literally like Skynet was actually taking over. Um, it started doing things all by itself. I, I wasn't pressing anything and it was going through the menus and that is terrifying. Um, so it's no good for controlling menus. Um, also, you're supposed to be able to control the TV station using She That Should Not Be Named. So you should be able to say, switch to channel 23. How? I don't know. I've scoured the internet for an answer to this, and SwitchBot seems to have just entirely forgotten to tell you how to actually set that up. Um, it doesn't work, I think is the answer. It doesn't work. Aesthetics-wise, they came up with something that looks really trippy, man. Um, and I, I kind of like it. I think it's really cool. But the problem is, 
This is either on all the time or off all the time. I thought I might be able to schedule whether this light was on or not so that it could sit on my bedside table looking really cool until 10 o'clock at night when it would automatically switch off so it didn't keep me awake. Not the case. They didn't seem to think of that. They have thought of literally everything except that one piece of functionality, and that's kind of a bit of a shame. Uh, the Switch bot itself is a big fat b Um, it's huge! Um, it's really, really cool, and it, it's gonna work great anywhere that you aren't ashamed to show it. Uh, so it looks okay in a cupboard behind a door where you can't see it. Um, I honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's really cute and I would happily stick that anywhere. But your missus might feel a bit differently when you stick it on the mains light switch in your living room. She might come home and punch you in the face. For smart home integration, as I said, you will need to buy the flashing rainbow cloud. Uh, once you've bought that, you can advertise these things to Google Home, She That Should Not Be Named, and If This Then That. And the really clever part here is, the software's been super, super well thought through. You can say, I only want this one to be advertised, the others should be internal to my network and not advertised to the outside world. And I really like that, it's like they've really thought everything through, except for controlling your TV. Uh, so when it comes to navigation, it does not work, it's going to do whatever the hell it likes. But for on and off, those commands can also be advertised to Google Home and she that should not be named, and if this then that, so you can control your TV or your set-top box, which is great. A thermostat. How random. Uh, perhaps not that random. I think SwitchBots have realised that having a tiny little robot with a finger isn't really enough. So we should probably start controlling people's TVs and measuring the temperature of their house. So we can say if the house is above a certain temperature, press a switch. Or if the house is above a certain humidity, send an infrared signal. It's actually ingenious. They're clearly starting to spread uh, their footprint out into the smart home market and probably plan on having more devices. Uh, all that said, this is really, really well done. Uh, temperature at the top, humidity at the bottom, uh, and both of those things can be used as triggers in the app, and it's so easy to use because I think they've stolen the design. It looks very, very familiar. It's basically the Toya Smart Life uh, app, somehow reskinned, I think, and that works brilliantly well, so it's a good move. This is an incredible little gadget. It's well priced, I think. I think. You might say, Paul, it's overpriced. I disagree. I think this is a really good price for such a device. I just wish I had about 20 of them, because I've got loads of things I can think of that I can't be bothered to wire in a smart switch and have it click. Uh, and I want it to go around the house and click loads of things and drive Nisha mental, because although it's cute, it's very bulky. And that is probably the only other thing I'll say. It's quite a big, chunky device. Um, that will piss off a lot of girlfriends. Would I buy this stuff? The answer is yes. Uh, if for no other reason than to watch the little switch bot's arm come out and press buttons, because it makes me laugh my balls off. Uh, would I buy this thing if I didn't have to? No. Um, the Broadlink Black Bean and Broadlink RM Pro do a better job of controlling your TVs and your set-top boxes than this thing it does at the moment. Um, you might have to buy this, though, if you want to be able to control your switch bots using cloud services such as She That Should Not Be Named, Google Home, If This Then That, and Siri Shortcuts. So, would I buy this? Well, probably flipping have to, won't I? I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That will tell YouTube's algorithms, that was a good video. More people should see it. Uh, if you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and then ding that bell. If you ding that bell, it will notify you when I actually do uploadings of things. Uh, come and hang out with me at the following locations, the Twitters and the Facebooks and all that good stuff, and help make these videos a possibility please, like these amazing people here. Uh, these are my patrons from Patreon, and they make these videos happen. So come and do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I love you forever. See you next time. When a certain temperature occurs, make the little button go. Or when a certain temperature... One of the really unfortunate missing things is that... I won't say a name. <laughs> uh, so the small home integration works great for Google Home, If This Then That, and She That Should Not Be Named, and I'm already lost. What am I on about? Smart home integration wise, it works great thanks to this... What's this called? To the little arm. To the little arm. To the little arm. <laughs>